Well, good morning, Abundant Life Church. And there you all are right now. Let me say we all stand right now. Let's give Jesus Christ some praise in this house because that's why we came here today is to worship and praise the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Ain't he good? Yes, he is. Well, it's always good to see your bright, smiling, shining faces. Of course, y'all all know me. I'm Reverend Stephen Harden. I'm up here on behalf of our pastors, both doctors, Glenn and Carolyn Davis, as well as our associate pastors, Scott and Sandy Taylor. And we just want to give all of y'all out here and all of y'all watching a big old Texas howdy. How do, because that's how we do it here in Texas. If you're watching, maybe for the very first time on Facebook or YouTube, you're going to notice a toll-free 877 number right about there at the bottom of the screen. You see it says toll-free 877. That number's there just for you. Please feel free to call that number. Let us know where you're watching us from, from around the world, or maybe you got a praise report or a prayer request. But most of all, if you need to know Jesus Christ as your Savior, Please don't hesitate. Call that toll-free number right now. We got prayer warriors standing by right now to take your call today. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Here at Abundant Life Church, you guys know we like to start each service with the reading of a scripture. If you'll all notice the screens right now, let's all read that together, shall we? Matthew 28 and 6. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Matthew 28 and 6. Amen. Because he's not here, that's why we get to worship him today. Amen. At Abundant Life Church, we want y'all to know that we absolutely believe that God is good all the time. And all the time, y'all already know it. Who's ready to worship this morning? Who's ready to get the, the big old worship on this one like you ain't never worshiped before? Let's get it on. Let's worship right now with the Abundant Life Praise Leaders. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for your anointing here today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Yeah.
Sing that clap of praise up to the Lord. Hallelujah.
generation. Hey, and look at what the Lord has done. Sing it to the darkness.
and all my days have been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will see of the goodness of God and all my
answers back and you will answer now you are the same god you are the same god you were providing then you are Never changes. It's all forever. We feel you now. You're the same God. You're the same God. How we need you now. I'm calling on the Holy Spirit. Almighty river, come and fill me again. Come and fill me. Come and fill me again. Let that be your prayer today. Come and fill me
past couple months, I've been walking in a, in a new area in my life that the Lord has been speaking to me about. Um, and there's, don't misunderstand before I say this, there's nothing wrong with questioning God about things that we're going through, but I've kind of moved into a new area not to question God. And, and just, when I say I trust God, I found that when I questioned God, then I started wavering in my trust in God. And so I just began to just start saying, God, I don't know why these things are happening or what's going on here and there, but I trust you. And I know that you have every good intention in my life, just as your word says. So, I, I, so I've been kind of learning just to lean on the Lord and just say, you know, when situations, times, and trials that come up, I don't really question God. I just say, you know what I say? I say, God, I trust you. I trust you. I don't know why all of this is going on or why this is happening or how why I feel this way, but I trust. I trust you. And you know what? I've learned that, you know, that he's faithful. We, we sing about the faithfulness of God. And when I trust him, when I trust in him, I know that he's faithful. I know he's everything that the word says that he is. Now, I'm not saying we don't, we don't question God on certain things. Don't misunderstand me, but... But my, my point is, is I've been walking in a new level of just saying, God, I trust you. You know, and, and, I've, and I've noticed that, you know, when it's time for God to reveal whatever it is that God wants to reveal to me about the situation I'm in, he'll let me know. He'll let me know. I'll, I'll pray about these things and all of that, but I, but I always just begin to say, God, I trust you. Now, I don't know who that's for today, but maybe you need to... Maybe you need to walk in a new area and say, God, you, maybe you've been questioning. Because, you know, sometimes when you start questioning a lot of things, you know, you, a lot of times that we're in relationships or different things like that, when you begin to start questioning the relationship or the other person in the relationship, it means you don't really trust that other person. So when you can get to a place in a relationship with God where you just say, God, I trust you. I trust you. Wholeheartedly, I trust you. Man, I'm telling you what, there's a freedom that you'll begin to start walking in in your relationship with God. And so I just want to share that with you today. I don't know who that's for, but maybe you're going through some things. Maybe you're beginning to ask God a lot of questions. And God's saying, man, in your questions, you're beginning to doubt me. Why don't you just start trusting me? Amen? Amen? Is that all right this morning? Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. You may be seated this morning in the house of the Lord. It is good to be here on this beautiful Palm Sunday this morning. Amen. Amen. It's that time of year where we come together and, and uh, we celebrate. That is, we're going to celebrate next Sunday. We're going to celebrate Easter and what Christ did for us on the cross. And, uh, you know, I, I always love this time of year, especially driving around. You see the trees beginning to start to bloom and people are planting flowers. It just, it just is a sign of newness. It's a sign of, uh, of life is coming back again. And so, amen, that's what we've been praying for here at Abundant Life Church is for uh, the spirit of revival. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. We have a few announcements this morning. Um, and uh, then we're going to hear the good word of the Lord that we heard in the 8.30 this morning. I know you'll be blessed. Amen. Amen. Hadn't our praise and worship been good this morning? Yeah. Amen. Um, today is uh, Sister Robin's birthday today. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, Sister Robin. Amen. And anybody else that's had birthdays this month or anniversaries, uh, we want to say happy birthday, happy anniversary to those people as well in the month of April. And uh, 
Um, there will be a, out in the foyer, I think there's a list of all of those names if you're looking for those specifically. Amen. Um, also, there is for are the singles, uh, this is a singles announcement. For, we'll be meeting at the Dallas Arboretum Saturday, April the 15th at 12 o'clock. For, our, for, the out, for the spring outing, it'll be at the Dallas Arboretum. If you have any questions, you can see Sister Tiffany or Sister Bonnie for any information regarding that. Uh, don't forget our midweek services at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. Come expecting great and mighty things on Wednesday night. And uh, also uh, on April the 22nd at 10 o'clock, uh, there will be a fishing tournament in, in uh, Sulphur Springs, Texas, which is about an hour, hour and a half from here. Uh, you can see Brother Gary Franklin, which typically comes in the, in the 830 services. Uh, but there is a sign-up sheet. There's a map that's out there. Uh, it's going to be a great time in the Lord. Uh, maybe you say, well, I don't fish and I don't like fishing. That's okay. Bring a chair and an umbrella and just come out and enjoy the weather and, and the fellowship. Amen. it would be a great time. That's April the 22nd at 10 a.m. Uh, also, as I mentioned, that next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. It's Easter Amen. Sunday, and we're coming together to celebrate uh, what Christ did for us. And so I want to I wanna invite everybody, by the way, of streaming, uh, you know, um, if you're able to be in the house of the Lord, come be with us at the house of the Lord. If we're, we're too far away from where you're watching today, find a local church and get involved in your local church and, and just get involved in what God is doing around the world today. And uh, no greater time to be in the house of the Lord than Easter Sunday. It's a day to come and just, just begin to rejoice and the, what Christ did for you and I. Amen? Amen. Uh, also, uh, prayer will be tonight at 5.30 right here in the sanctuary. That's tonight at 5.30. And then uh, continuing prayer on Monday and Tuesday at 7 p.m. That's Monday and Tuesday at 7 p.m. And Wednesday before the 7 o'clock service at 6.30, we'll be meeting for prayer also. So that's tonight at 5.30. Uh, tomorrow and Tuesday at 7 p.m. and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. We're continuing our fasting one meal on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays uh, through April the 14th. Uh, so be faithful uh, in, in your fasting, amen, and, and, and believing not only that you're just fasting a meal, you know, uh, that when you fast, you know, you're fasting unto the Lord and, and God can begin to start revealing things in your life and begin to start... Uh, bringing, uh, you know, sometimes fasting brings things up out of us, amen, and, uh, you know, it's, it brings up all the, the, the impurities out of our lives and begins to refine us, amen, and so uh, we're believing for uh, fasting, and, 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 and as the scripture says, some things only go by way of fasting, amen, and so we, we need to continue our fasting and praying, amen, amen. Uh, if you'll stand for just a moment, we're going to... Uh, uh, we're going to do our healing decoration and our tithing and offering. Uh, just an update uh, on my brother Terry. Uh, he had his results that have come back uh, this past week, and uh, everything looks to be uh, shrinking. And uh, we're giving God praise for that. Um, we had a, a little family uh, thing that we had to had to meet over some of my father's stuff and. And uh, he, he had forgot his phone, so I had to take it back to his house. And uh, uh, he had got out. And if you've if you known kind of where he's at, gone from being unable to move from his neck down uh, and then kind of walking just really, you know, it, difficult and not sure-footed. Uh, yesterday, as he kind of trotted across his lawn back to the front of the house. And I just, I just gave God praise for that. And uh, um, he got to the house. He's a... You know, he, we grew up, and, and he's, he's a boxer, and, and he goes, man, I'm, I'm ready to get back in the ring. And uh, I just I laughed at him, but I just give God praise for that, Amen. you know. He's been, uh, he's, been, he's been one of the most positive people I've ever seen that's gone through so much and never once has, has not smiled nor have not given God praise in the midst of this. And so I give God praise for what he's doing in his life, and uh, we're believing God for Brother Lawyer, we're believing God for your miracle and continued miracle. Amen. 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 We're going to say that the miracle's here. We're just going to say the continued miracle, the continued work of God in your body. 
Amen. And we're praying for Brother Ralph Autry. We're believing God for a complete and total healing in his body as well. I know we're still praying for Sister Karen Chagnon. Spoke with her yesterday. I know she's, uh, I think she's going to rehab, I think, today or tomorrow. And uh, so she's, she's doing well. And then uh, my father-in-law, our stepfather, who uh, has kidneys are kind of failing him, and uh, they're trying to get all that under control. So he's back in the hospital, continues to fall. And uh, so pray for him, uh, Brother Welch, and uh, so many others that we have on the prayer list today. And uh, if you'll just begin to, begin to pray over those daily, wherever you're at, get a copy of that. If you don't have a copy, the Lord knows who's on the list. Yes, and just begin to say, Lord, you know our prayer list. Lord, we're lifting them up today. Amen? Amen. So as you're standing this morning, uh, let's, let's just do our healing declaration, Amen. keeping all of these in mind and those that we also know that are not uh, uh, on the list that we may be in contact with. Amen? Amen. I declare by the stripes of Jesus that I am healed. He took my sickness. He carried my pain. I believe it is the will of God for me to be healed. In the name of Jesus, I break the spirit of infirmity, sickness, and premature death off my body. I declare that none of these things exist in my heavenly Father. I declare in the name of Jesus that every sickness, hidden disease, infections or pain in my body was paid for at the cross and I am healed today. How many believe that today? Amen. 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 I believe that. Amen. As you're still standing, we're going to do our, our uh, tithe and declaration today, our offering declaration today. If you'll repeat with me. Oh God, today we believe you for an open heaven, unlike storehouses, miracles, visitations, and divine manifestations. We join our faith and trust in your word by returning the tithe and sowing seed offerings into your kingdom. By doing so, we know that you have, in our lives, rained down on us and water our seed in favor, blessings, and increase. In the name of Jesus, amen. You can bring your tithe and offering at this time. I say, God bless Pastor Davis. Thank you, Pastor Scott. Amen. I just bless all of you today in the wonderful name of the Lord. It's so good to be together. There's nothing like it. A fellowship and the camaraderie of God's people. Uh, that is why David said, there's some things I can't do by myself. And, and sometimes I need somebody else to magnify the Lord with me. Sometimes I need an us, not just a me. Let us, let us exalt his name together. And that's what we're doing in this house, and that's what we have done. And what an awesome atmosphere. Our incredible praise team and band, thank you all so much for always ushering us into 
the presence of the Lord in such a wonderful and great, great way. Amen. I can't tell you how happy we are to see Brother Lawyer in this house today, Sister Lawyer, and of course Shelley. I can't tell you what it means to us to see them here and, uh, and his complete healing coming forth. Amen. And we are rejoicing, rejoicing and rejoicing. Amen. Praise God. And uh, as uh, Pastor Scott mentioned a moment ago, amen, concerning trust, because if you don't ever learn that, uh, then you will, you will find yourself beginning to question everything. And I found out a long time ago, Pastor Scott, and I just, there's been a lot of times, and you know this as well, but uh, when things happen, I've had to say this, well, I don't understand this, but I trust you. trust you and that's all he wants if you trust him that's it it does move you into a new place thank you pastor it's a good word thank you amen 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 brother Ralph sister Ann if you all are watching we're sending the word of the Lord to heal you all today and to heal you with new lungs uh, and on Friday uh, Brother Ralph and Ann celebrated their 49th wedding anniversary. So congratulations to you both. You get a chance to text them this week and just congratulate them. I know they'd be blessed. Amen. And happy birthday to Robin. And uh, thank her and all of our staff that make it possible uh, to get this message and this service out to the world. Amen. And Brother, Brother Tom. Bouvier and Jeanette and all of you that are working so hard today. Amen. You probably received, if you, if you, are, if you are able to get the phone tree, I know there are some of you that aren't, aren't able to receive that, but if you did, you will remember that last night I mentioned our prayer time that's going on right now. We are entering into our sixth week of prayer on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights connected to our Sunday night service and uh, but this week, we're asking for something different. Now, we, we've been so grateful. We've had about 20 or 25 faithful people these six weeks. And I know that's asking a lot when um, evenings are in, We only get just a handful of them, and, and there's, there's something usually you could sure put one somewhere. But what we're asking this week is, is on Monday night and Tuesday night, we're asking for everybody that can be here. I mean, if just whatever you have to do to make that happen... We need, I want to, i just like to see Monday and Tuesday a moment of explosion in prayer moving us toward Easter service and moving us toward the resurrection power of God and the resurrection in Brother Lawyer's body, the resurrection in your body, my body, uh, your family, your children, your needs, every, the harvest that is coming, the inheritance of the blessings of God and the promises of the word of the Lord because God's about to thunder from heaven I'm telling you God is about to thunder from heaven hallelujah and so we are so very very excited about that amen so this week we're just asking you for this week Monday and Tuesday we'd like to have everybody come and uh, into this room together uh, and then of course we'll be praying tonight We'll be here tonight, and uh, all of you are welcome. We'd love to have you here tonight at 5.30. And what we do, uh, of course, we pray with a prayer list for sure. We call the names of the people that were trusting God for complete healing in their lives. We pray over America. We pray over revival in this church. Part of my prayer is, God, revive me. Uh, I want to be revived to, in a place like I've never been before. I, wanna, I want God to move in me like I've never, he's never moved. So I'm praying for revival in this church, revival in us, amen, and revival in our nation. So we're looking forward to a great, great, great time tonight and then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Are y'all ready for the word of the Lord? Amen. Now, 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 16. And when the young man that had brought David down, behold, the enemy, if I say the enemy, enemy, behold, the enemy was spread abroad upon all the earth, eating, drinking, and dancing over your stuff. 
over my stuff. Because of the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. But David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken away. David rescued his two wives, and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that the enemy had taken from them. David recovered all. David recovered all. Now, Ziglag is the place where David and his men had lost everything. David is also the place where David worshipped. Ziglag is also the place where David worshipped and encouraged himself in the Lord. Ziglag is also the place that David got a prophetic word from the Lord. And that word was simply this. It was a promise. It's, I want you to pursue. I want you to get up. I know things look hard. I know things look difficult. I know things look empty. I know things don't look like they're working out. I know I don't feel right. I don't feel good. But he said, I want you to get up. And I want you to pursue. <laughs> and you're going to recover all. Now, we all have events, times, and places when our enemy has taken from us. But, but Ziglag represents the collective places in all of our lives. It represents everything that's ever, ever been taken from you. So in that manner, we all have one. You got a Ziglag, I got one. And in that zigzag, brother lawyer, is everything that the enemy has ever taken from you, health-wise, finances, mental, emotional, strength, your peace, your joy, amen, your family, your children, everything that the enemy has ever taken collectively has been held captive by the enemy at a place that they named Ziglag. But I got news for the enemy today. We're headed down to the enemy's camp. And we're going to take back everything that the enemy has taken from us. Because all our pardon, all of our salvation, all of our healing, all of our blessings, and all of our promises have been signed. <laughs> That they have been sealed and they have been delivered by the blood of Jesus, the Word of God, and the power of the Holy Ghost. For all of our promises of God in Christ, hallelujah, amen, is yea and there, amen. Because we are told in 1 Corinthians 15 that everything that Adam lost. Uh, Jesus got back for us. Hallelujah. He redeemed it all. And that's why I want to put this scripture back up. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil, nor anything that the enemy had taken from them. For Jesus, the son of David, Jesus, now I know that's not in the scripture because I inserted that. You see that parenthesis? So everybody would know. But the Bible said that Jesus Christ is the son of David. That's why they cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. I want to tell you today that Jesus, the son of David, recovered it all at the cross. Can you say amen? Praise God, amen and amen. So our promises today from God, they're signed, they're sealed. And they're delivered by the blood of Jesus, by the word of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost. God will restore our zigzag. 
God will restore our Ziglag. Can you say man? Hallelujah. Because I got, a, I got a vision this week of our promises just coming home. And they were dancing. Our promise were singing. Hey, I'm yours. I belong to you. I don't know. I want you to get a little vision of this with me today. Because this week when the devil comes by, tries to tell you, advertise, you belong to me. Just to know, I saw my promises. And my promises are saying, hey. So, so I, don't know what you, I don't know what the promises would sound like. But could you just humor me a little bit today? And, and it may have sounded something like this from an old song written by Stevie Wonder in 1970. It makes me smile. Amen. And hopefully you won't ever forget this word today that your promises are coming home. Let's do it. Here I am. I'm yours. I'm signed. My promises signed. My promises have been sealed. And my promises have been delivered. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And I got news for the enemy today. He got a notice. See, the devil has lied to you and me, but he's been ser served. He got a notice already, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. Amen. Because the enemy has already heard the word that, that you're free, that you're healed, that, you're, that your, your kids are coming home. Amen. Your life is going to be worked out. Amen. Your kids are going to be free from this work of the enemy that's tried to destroy your sons, tried to destroy your daughters, tried to destroy your grandchildren. I got news today. The jail cell has been unlocked. All we need to do is just kick open the door. Can you say amen? So in Judges chapter 7, verse 10, Gideon was having a little trouble trusting God and believing God's word. Remember, he's the guy that did the fleeces. Let the wool be wet, let the wool be dry. Remember, he did all that stuff. Finally, God said, you know what? Gideon, I, I, want, I want you to go down to the enemy's camp tonight, and I want you to just hear what they're saying down there. I want to tell you something. The enemy is, is talking about their defeat. That they, they know that the time is short. They know they can't hold on forever. They know they got to let turn loose. Hallelujah. And he said, but Gideon, if, if you fear to go down by yourself, well, take, take Hira, thy servant, and take them down to the host of the enemy. And thou shalt hear what they're saying. I got news. The enemy is having dreams about your deliverance. Ah, the enemy's having nightmares about your kids getting out of jail. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. The, 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 the enemy's having nightmares. Amen. About what the doctor's going to have to say. You know what? There's no cancer. Uh, there's new lungs. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil's having some nightmares right now because we've come to tell you uh, that the promises of God are signed, sealed, and they've been delivered. Hallelujah. And you get down there tonight and said, you're going to, Hear what they're saying, and afterward, you're going to have your hands strengthened to go down. So he went down with Pura, his servant, to the outside of the camp of the armed men, and the Midianites and the Malachites and all of the children of the east lay aside along the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, camels without number, as the sand of the seaside for multitude. But when Gideon was come down, behold, there was a man having a dream. And he just had awakened, and he's talking to his buddy. He said, I dreamed a dream. He said, and lo, a big barley cake came tumbling out of heaven, and it just fell onto the very host of Midian. And it fell on the tent, and it smote the tent, and it fell and overturned the tents laying aside. And the other guy looks at him, his eyes gets big. His heart starts pounding. He says, oh, my. He said, that's none other than Gideon. 
That's none other than Gideon. Amen. Hallelujah. And Gideon is coming, and he's going to defeat us, and we're in trouble. Praise God. And uh, that's nothing other. Save Gideon with the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hands hath God delivered Midian and all the hosts. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshiped and returned to the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered into your hand the host. I want to just preach to you just a minute that Gideon was a type of the bread. Remember, there's bread that came from heaven as manna. Praise God. The Bible said that the bread fell as a loaf on the enemy's camp and totally destroyed an enemy without, listen, no swords, no, no, no planes, no, no tanks, no, amen, no horses, just a loaf of bread fell out of the sky and it just took out the enemy. Jesus came along and said, I'm, I'm that bread. He said, ha, ha, ha. He said, I, I want to tell you one thing. I'm the bread that came out of heaven. If you eat me, you're not going to die. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus is the bread of life falling into my sickness, falling into your sickness, falling into our family, falling into our addictions, falling into our harvest, falling into our inheritance. Because our victory has been signed, sealed, and delivered. This victory, this miracle, this promise is yours. Our zigzags are coming home. The prison called Ziglag is being opened today. And everything that's been taken over the years is coming back. And the Bible said if the enemy stole from me, he has to restore. Not just bring what he took seven times. He's, he's going to have to bring it back. Can I just tell you right now, hallelujah, the enemy, amen, is having a nightmare over what he's about to lose. Uh, the transfer of wealth from the wicked that's about to occur, uh, amen, the glory of God that's about to show up, amen, on the atheistic school campuses, uh, amen, uh, I'm telling you, uh, Praise God. Uh, the state of Texas right now is trying to pass a new law, amen, here in our state uh, to put prayer uh, back in every public school uh, and a time of Bible reading uh, for every student every day. I'm just telling you the loaf of bread from heaven uh, is falling uh, in America. It's falling uh, on America today. It's falling uh, on our churches today. It's falling on your family today. It's falling on you today. It's falling. It's falling. Because God is about to bring Ziglag it all home. Can you say amen? Let's clap our hands to the Lord right now. Because, you see, Jesus has signed all the legal documents that was necessary at the cross. Hmm. Hallelujah. He took the thorns in his brow for our peace. He, put the, he took the stripes on his back for our healing. He took the shedding of his blood for our salvation. He signed it at the cross with these words, it is finished. Jesus. It's been signed at the cross by the blood of Jesus. He has sealed it with his resurrection. Ha! Ah, if the devil had known, if he'd have figured out in time, I'm going to get there. Amen. He'd have been happy, amen, with his death. But you can't let him get out of that grave. That's why everybody in the world tried to seal it. Get Herod to seal it. Get, get the Romans to seal it. Get everybody to seal it. Amen. Get the Sanhedrin court to seal it. Get the Pharisees to seal it. Everybody, we got to make sure he don't come out. Because everything he signed for at the cross don't mean anything if he stays in this tomb. But if he comes out, 
If he comes out, Pastor, then that seals everything he signed for at the cross. The devil said, we can't let him out. We can't let him out. We got to hold him in here. They sealed the tomb. They rolled up. The Bible said they didn't just roll, roll a stone, but a great stone, a huge stone. It was so big there, people were talking about it. How in the world are we going to move this stone? How are we going to get this door open? Ha, ha, Jesus said this. He said, no man taketh my life. I got the power to lay it down, and I got the power to pick it back up again. Hallelujah. You can put me in a barred tomb, but in three days and three nights, I'm coming out. Hallelujah. Praise God, because what I signed at the cross, I'm going to seal at the empty tomb. Resurrection Sunday seals what he signed at the cross. Your healing, my healing, deliverance was signed. It was sealed. And on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, it was delivered. <laughs> everything he signed for, everything he sealed, hallelujah, on the day of Pentecost, Ah, when it get to, began to happen, Peter remembered it sounded so familiar. What he was seeing about the outpouring and the people shouting and the dancing and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and he began to think about it. He said, you know what I remember? I, I believe it was Joel. I, I believe it. See, let me go back. Joel. Swear, Joel. Back one. Oh, Joel chapter 2, right here. Joel chapter 2. Amen. I believe there it is right here in Joel chapter 2. And it shall come to pass, saith God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Peter said, what you see, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Hallelujah. It's been signed. It's been sealed. And it has now been delivered. And I'm going to close with this. When Jesus went into hell, and they were having another celebration because they thought, he's done, it's over, we won. People are going to be sick. People are going to go to hell. People are going to be bound and never be free. And Jesus kicks open the gates of hell with a legal document that's been signed and sealed and is about to be delivered in person to the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when Jesus went into hell, took the keys of death and hell, and the message was delivered unto the enemy, the devil said, if we had known what Jesus would do with his death, his burial, and his resurrection, we would have never crucified the Lord of glory. What was they saying? It's over. It's over for us. It's over. Everybody goes free. Everybody, be, everybody can be healed. Everybody can be delivered. Everybody, amen. It's over. It's over. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. They're talking about you in the enemy's camp. They're talking about your healing. They're talking about your deliverance. They're talking about your miracle. They're talking about your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil's having dreams and nightmares. So in closing, we are here today to enforce a subpoena. I love how they, when, they, when, they're, when they're signing a, a subpoena, they have to make sure that the person gets the subpoena, knows, number one, it is a subpoena, have to receive it, accept it, and when they do that, then the person, the officer says, you've been served. Now, if you don't show up for that subpoena, now you can be put in jail. You can be held in contempt of court because the subpoena, you received it. See, that here's what my point is. The devil not only knows about this, he received it. <laughs> he had to sign for it. <laughs> He's, he had to say, you know what? Woo! <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, because devil, today you've been served. <laughs> today, 2,000 years ago you were served, but today we're enforcing that eviction. Get out. Get out of my body. Get out of my house. Get out of my family. Get out of my America. Get out of the church. Hallelujah. Get out of the body of Christ. Get out, get out, get out. We evict you. We evict you. We're here to enforce a eviction. You've been served and now you're being evicted, which means sin you can't stay. It means sickness you, you got to go. It means disease you can't stay because the promises of God are all. Every one of them, all of them have been signed, they've been sealed. And they have been delivered. Mm, 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 mm. <sighs> so, healing is just singing. I'm yours. I'm yours. <laughs> I'm yours. Here I am. Take me. I'm yours, baby. Hallelujah. Amen. My healing is singing. My promises are dancing in the rain. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the devil knows that it's over. He knew it was. That's what he said 2,000 years ago. If we had known what he was going to do with his death, burial, and resurrection, we'd have never done that. Everybody say, it's done. It's done. It's done. Hallelujah. Let's praise him right now. Hallelujah. Sister Davis, if you come, praise God. Amen. So, devil, you've been served. Sickness, disease, you've been served. Now it's time for you to be evicted. You have no, listen, the devil has no legal recourse. He can't appeal. He can't appeal because the highest court in the land has already accepted the blood of Jesus as full payment for my sin. The highest court in the land has already accepted the stripes of Jesus for the healing in my body. Amen. The blood of Jesus. Amen. The highest court in the, in the universe has already accepted the blood of Jesus as full payment for all restoration. Hallelujah. He can't appeal the eviction papers. They've been... Notably signed. And Pastor, we both love that word there, but it is finished means two things. One is you can't add to it. Can't add to it. And number two, you can't take anything away from it. It's signed. It's sealed. And it's delivered. And even the California raisins know that. Hallelujah. Woo, praise God. All, let's all stand if you can, if you would. All, everybody say all. all. All the promises of God are signed, sealed, and, and delivered. delivered. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Today is a breakthrough out day, a breakthrough day, a breakout day. Because when, when Gideon got down to the army of the enemy, and he heard the dream being interpreted. And, the, and, his, and his fellow soldier said, This is nothing but the sword of Gideon and the hand of God. We're defeated. <laughs> when this loaf of bread falls upon us, it's over. Sickness, that's why communion is such a powerful thing. Yes, yes. We call it the meal that heals. When you take that bread and that cup, hallelujah, it's like the loaf is falling on your sickness. Jesus is the bread. He's the loaf. Come on. He's the loaf today. We need to rejoice. We need, we need to rejoice. And I don't know what my promises sound like, but all week long, I'm gonna, I promise you, all week long, I'm going to hum this song. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Baby, I'm yours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's worship him as they sing. The altar is open.
you that are watching by internet, you can call us, you can text us. But right now, we want you to understand that there's nothing that the devil can do about the contract. He can't revoke it. It's over. Zigzag, my zigzag, your zigzag, whatever. Whatever's helped inside your zigzag is coming home today. Coming home today. Hallelujah. Your blood is enough. Jesus, it's enough. Come on, let's praise him. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him today, church. It's renewing, restoring, saving and healing, delivering God. Hallelujah, Lord. Setting us free. It is more everlasting. All who receive in your blood. Your blood is enough, Lord, your blood. John, the revelator, was exiled to the Isle of Patmos, and, and he encountered the resurrected, glorified Christ. And he said to John, he said, look at me, John. He said, I'm, I'm he that, that was, I, I am he that is, and is to come. I was dead. But now I'm alive forevermore. And he pulls out the keys that he took away from Lucifer. And he said, this victory for the body of Christ was signed, sealed, and delivered. And the legal transfer, the title deed to this earth that Adam gave up, has been transferred back to Christ Hallelujah. And here we are today as believers who simply, Amen. as Pastor Scott said, just need to trust him. Just put your trust in what he has done by his death, by his burial, and by his resurrection. Hallelujah. So while we sing one more time before Pastor Scott comes, let's just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's worship Him. Let God do something special for you today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
What a great word today. Amen. Amen. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Amen. You know, I had mentioned this in the 830 this morning. You know, this, this week I was pouring over uh, contracts that we have at work and, and uh, looking at the terms and conditions that we have for them. And, and uh, I began to start noticing kind of a, um, a trend that was beginning to happen there is that we, uh, a lot of these contracts had expired, but yet we continued to pay them. And, uh, you know, um, you know, you go back and you look, and we've had a few of those where we've issued for credits. You know, trying to get your money back out of somebody is a lot more difficult than overpaying them. And uh, as I began to start looking at that, you know, and as Pastor was talking about, uh, it is finished, you know. I, I, you know, those are some of the, those are the three most powerful words in, in, in the Bible to me, is that it's finished. And, uh, you know, I... I I got to thinking about them contracts this morning. You know, it's finished. We finished this contract a long time ago. Why are we still paying it? And a lot of times we will still continue to pay on contracts that have expired. And, and, and we're no different in the spiritual realm that sometimes that we'll just continue to go ahead and remit payment to what the devil's got us under some kind of contract. That contract's been expired a long time ago, over 2,000 years ago when he said it's finished. And in 1976, I signed right next to Jesus and said, look, I'm coming into agreement that this has been completed. I'm not no longer under that contract, but I'm under the new contract, under the shed blood of Jesus Christ because it's signed, sealed, and delivered. Amen? Amen. Amen. What a great word today. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you today. We thank you, Father, for the word. We thank you for the worship. And Lord, most of all, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing today in, in your people today all across the world. Lord, I'm praying, Father, for revival to break out even greater in all of the world, Lord. Father, touch your people. Revive us all, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Lord, that you're sending angels to work in the harvest field. Lord, to stir the hearts and lives of family members, friends, and those that we don't know this week, Lord. Lord, begin to touch their heart. Lord, begin to speak to them where they are today. Lord, I I'm praying today, Lord, that you'll even shake up and stir up every atheist, every agnostic, every uh, uh, place that, that, that doesn't believe and doesn't, doesn't have uh, what it takes to, to, to get here on their own. God, I'm praying that you'll send somebody this week to shake things up this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. You're dismissed. Shake hands and be friendly. Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Glenn Davis right here at the Abundant Life Church of Garland, Texas. And I want to personally thank all of you for watching today. The Lord bless you so much. Wherever you are today, both here in Garland or around the world, it's a joy to have you as part of our extended family. I pray today that the word of the Lord blessed you, that the worship that took place in this house, that brought down the presence of the Lord, was felt by you all. It, it is a life-changing experience when God works a miracle in your life and you begin to feel the presence of the Lord. And I trust that God drew you for salvation today and uh, we're going we're gonna to pray over you before we go in just a moment, but we want to just remind you that we're believing God right now for great breakthrough in America, great revival in this country, great revival here at Abundant Life Church, and great revival in every church uh, around the world that's hungry for the move of God. And we are welcoming the Holy Spirit. This is a time when churches need to say, Welcome, Holy Spirit, to our services Hallelujah. Come pour out your spirit upon all flesh, just like you said you would in the book of Acts and in the book of Joel. Again, before I go, let me pray over you today and bless your family. Father, I just thank you for those that are watching. Bless every person. Lord, touch every home, every family. Lord, uh, God, touch our, the children, the youth. God, uh, have mercy today in every life that has a special need. I pray for strength. I pray for every need to be met. I pray for uh, people to be saved today. 
And I pray for every, every life to be changed by the power of God. And we give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget, this is the Abundant Life Church. We are located at 1717 Castle Drive in 